Is Matias Michelli primed for yet another solid year? We're going to talk about that on today's episode of the Locked On Utah Hockey Club podcast. You are Locked On Utah Hockey Club, your daily podcast on the Utah Hockey Club, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the show, everybody. This is Locked On Utah Hockey Club, your number one daily podcast on the Utah Hockey Club. I am your host, Rob and Leonio, alongside Tom Callahan. We want to thank everyone for making this show your first listen every single day. We're free and available everywhere you get your shows. We're talking about a little bit about Matias Michelli on today's episode. And and Tom, you know, Matias Michelli coming into Another year that I believe is like now is like third, his third year with uh, with the you know previous Arizona Coyotes now Utah Hockey Club franchise, um, and last two years really impressed. He even had a brief stint in his rookie year, uh, looking like could very well had earned a Calder candidacy at least a look at some votes. Uh, and he's only been getting better, honestly. I think a lot of people are really looking at this kid and he's saying this kid, he's primed for some really good top six minutes he's coming in um is it are we going to continue to see that trend this year you know when you look at his numbers from two years ago when there was calder talk sur- uh, surrounding him and then of course getting hurt doesn't help and in fact really kind of put an end uh to the chatter but it was deserved up until that point he had uh put together a campaign it ended up being 64 games worth of effort and 49 points, so not quite a point per game, but pretty solid and an even rating uh, to go along with 13 power play points uh, and 12 of those were assists. And in fact, he had 38 assists in those 64 games. That's pretty impressive to me. Shooting percentage was 18%, which I, I don't think is sustainable. And we see then last year it wasn't. It drops to 11.4. Still pretty good. Don't get me wrong, still pretty good. But uh, definitely the Rookie of the Year talk was warranted for uh, Matias Michelli. And then last year he puts up another 40 assists, 57 points in 82 games, minus four. So still, you know, doing pretty well on a club that, quite frankly, you know, needed to learn to keep the puck out of its net more. Uh, Still got his power play time, 12 power play points, and his ice time went up by about 45 seconds. It went from 1540 to 1614 on average per game. So you're seeing a little bit more trust from from the coaching staff uh, being placed into more situations. I like the trend of his growth and not only bearing out the numbers, but also realizing this is a guy who is coming over from Finland, is adapting to the North American game. It takes defensemen and goalies, I think, a little longer when they come over from that type of uh, setup. But even forwards are still adjusting to the smaller ice surface in North America. He's got a lot of talent, and I think that he is a player that is going to be not only top six reliable, but could, depending on his continued development curve, push for a top line spot at one point or another. And certainly, if anything should happen to anyone on the top line, I think he's a guy you look at to see if you can slot him in. And, and certainly, and I, and I think that's kind of the unique role that you have a guy like me, Matias Michelli. You know, for a while, I think. You know, like everyone, like at first, all of them is top nine, but it went to top six pretty darn quickly after the kind of campaign, you know, the, these first couple of years that he's had. And it's like, all right, he's he is he, he is in, he is projecting and moving a lot faster when we a lot of us anticipated. Um, he's looking comfortable out there. He's looking like he um, kind of just belongs on the ice. You know, the interesting thing, Robin, you talk about that. He's a fourth round pick. And I think when you're not a first rounder, sometimes even a second rounder, you arrive with a chip on your shoulder. You know you need to earn your place. You need to prove yourself. And I think he's always come in and been willing to, to you know, show continued improvement and work on being better for the Utah Hockey Club, and then it translates onto the ice. You don't always get players that are coachable. You don't always get guys that you can you can bring up and bring along, but you try to make those right decisions. And honestly, you look back, 2019, he's, he's 5'11", 176. 
that's not quite the Armstrong mold, is it? I mean, he's not quite big enough, not quite, you know, hefty enough to really fit in there, but it takes all kinds. And in today's NHL, you can be a little bit smaller player if you're athletic enough, if, you know, you're you're gifted enough to be able to survive in that environment. Well, I think Michelli is one of those guys. I think he absolutely has what it takes and has shown he has what it takes to be able to stick. And you know what? I'm actually pretty excited. What excites me uh, really the most is the power play time and the generation of points on the power play. Yeah, it only went up by one point last year from 12 to 13. But I think if you can get some really solid second unit power play time out of him, he can become a dynamic contributor to your scoring. Even and that's more than certainly, it. you know, what, yeah, and it's certainly what you want to see a little bit more, right? You want to see a bit, so, you know, a player who is able to give that kind of, uh, that kind of action on the ice. And I want to point up to something else, something else really quick, Tom. Um, Matthias Bocelli started off like he, when he first came over to the North American game. He's had spent 47 games with the Tucson Roadrunners um, with uh, 57 points, you know, well over a point per game with the Tucson Roadrunners. But here's the thing. I, that was maybe think, I think maybe my last year covering the Roadrunners um, before I moved up to Phoenix. And I, I kept adding, asked the question, well, how does Matias Michelli look? And I'm like, well, I can't really, it's hard for me to tell. I mean, his stats numbers say something great, but the Roadrunners overall that year were just outright terrible. They were bad. And I didn't, and I think that's why I couldn't really pay attention. I couldn't really see the shine, the potential, the true potential that Matias Michelli was able to give. So like, that's why it was kind of even a little bit of a shock to me. I'm like, oh, whoa, you came out of nowhere because he came from a Roadrunners team that just did not have the talent. Here's something else for you, too, is despite only playing 47 games of that schedule, those 57 points were still tops among rookies in the AHL that year. So he was still the rookie points leader. I mean, that's that's yeah. telling you and something it, right there. And again, we're talking about, yeah, that year where, you know, where, where, the, where the Roadrunners were led by Matias Michelli and Michael Carcone. And like, like that, like, in, like in, in it all, that team should have been good, but they kept losing games. So it was like, what is wrong? What is wrong? What is wrong with this team? So, and, and, which is absolutely amazing. And I think that's kind of why, like, and like I said, it was a little bit of a surprise because um, kind of flew under the radar. My focus was on the team at the time, not those individual players. You know, and I mean, I get it. I understand that we're talking about in the American Hockey League, just things happen. Number one, Coachella Valley, um, you know, arrives and all of a sudden they're on fire. Well, no one really saw that coming, right? Just like right. you look at some teams and you think, wow, they're loaded with prospects. They should be really good. And then they just can't quite put it together. And, and to be fair, not every organization has the same goal for their American Hockey League franchise all the time. Yes, they would all like them to win. Don't get me wrong, because I think you learn a lot just from winning. However, some teams are willing to sacrifice wins at the hands of development. And they have slightly different philosophies about bringing players along, perhaps about exposing certain players to certain situations. You know, a guy could be lights out, you know, and just absolutely dominating at the American Hockey League level, but they might be limiting his minutes. They might be trying to expose him only to certain situations, trying to get a player's confidence back. And plus, you never know what the agreements are with the veterans on the team, if there are, you know, handshakes on ice time and on placement to get that guy to come to your team in the first place. Uh, you know, if if the handshake is with the vet you signed, hey, I'm the first line power play center, guess who else is not there? Some prospect. So, you know, those those are concessions that are made, and that might be a revelation to some people, but those concessions are made in order to get certain guys on your team. So, um, you know, it's it's always going to be just a little bit different depending on your situation. But I think the the great thing about Michelli, tremendous talent, was a rookie of the year in Finland, comes over, great rookie campaign in the American Hockey League, great rookie campaign in the NHL, finally gets the full season, and also the durability and the health Great to see that he got through pretty much unscathed last year. So appreciate that. And now you're kind of growing into yourself. That's the other thing. I mean, for all of his experience and everything he's done, he's still 23 years old. 
you know that's it is phenomenal that's so young it's so young so plenty of upside for michelli and it's exciting exactly we're talking about matthias michelli on today's episode of locked on utah hockey club what's the impact for matthias michelli going into 2024-25 nhl season and beyond we're going to talk about that right after this Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app usually go down the closer it gets to first pitch, with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seats, and their lowest price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. And it goes beyond MLB tickets. You can go to all kinds of sports events, concerts, comedy shows, and more. What you can do is just Pick out what kind of seat you might want. Take a look at the view from your seat. It's like, hey, do I like that seat? Get their, once again, their lowest price guarantee, event cancellation, cancellation protection, job loss protection, and more. My favorite feature, all-in pricing. Toggle this feature. It shows you the total upfront with no surprise fees at checkout. Download the game timeout. Create an account. And use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account with DM code L O C K E D O N N H L for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So let's keep this conversation going. Talking about Matthias Michelli on uh, on today's episode of Locked On Utah Hockey Club. Robin Leonio and Tom Callahan. Uh, let, let's let's get to it in this segment, Tom, talking about Michelli's impact going into this season. What are we anticipating to see from him this season? Maybe, of course, later l- later on, maybe figure out maybe like a point total you might project him to see. But let's start off overall with like, how do you feel like he's going to fit into this club this year? So this becomes the interesting question, Robin, for me is is Michelli, who's a lefty, uh, plays the left side. He is behind on the left side two fellas named Clayton Keller and Lawson Kraus. So pretty solid on the left side. Now, here's the thing. Do you want to see if Michelli can bring up more production and still remain on the third line? Or do you want to give him a chance in top six minutes? and do some shuffling around. I think that's something you have to look at. On the right side, um, you know, potentially you've got uh, Schmaltz, you've got Gunther, you've got Josh Doan, um, Stenlin can move around, make, and, and a lot of guys are listed as natural centers. Whenever, and fans, don't be fooled, just because a guy's listed as that position doesn't mean he has to play that position. Yeah. And I think it's good when you see someone listed as a natural center because it means they can move to the middle when they have to. And you're pretty deep up the middle if you're Utah, but putting a player on the wing is an easier transition. The other thing is, do you want to try him on the right side on his off wing? Do you want to try to see if he's got, you know, the ability to play that way? Some guys made a living over there. You know, they would play in the off wing and just either tee up the one timer or be able to make the feeds. Uh, And obviously he's, Right now, more of a setup guy. I wonder if they're going to ask him to try to shoot more. That's another consideration. Just looking at his, you know, his totals um, from last year. That was the other thing I wanted to point out, Robin. I talked about the shooting percentage going down, but the shot total went up by a lot. 64 games, he had only 61 shots on goal. So I think you go to the guy at that point and say, you're shooting less than once a game. We know you can distribute. We know you can pass. We would like you to shoot a little more. So in 82 games, he goes up to 149 shots. That's a significant difference. Oh, yeah. Now now we're talking almost two shots a game, uh, and that to me is a huge improvement. But And he goes from 11 to 17 goals. Still over a 10% shooting percentage, which is nice. Uh, I like that for the player. So I think the fact that they probably went to him and said, you need to shoot the puck more. And he did again, speaks to me, his potential to jump into top six minutes. It really explains one thing, Tom is, is his willingness to listen his willingness to take advice and, and, uh, and use it to, to, 
you know, to hone his skills. There are a lot of, a lot of NHL players out there uh, who they were a little stubborn. You know, the stubborn's like, you know, this is the way I've done it, and I'm kind of, kind of be com- this is the way I'm comfortable doing it, and that's how they just stay. Michelli is listening, and he's li- and he and he's getting better off of it, and he's figuring out himself and still getting more confident in himself as, as he's doing it um and i think that's why you're right i think he definitely can take those top six minutes this year but i, I think what the cool thing is about it is you can easily move him down to third which is which really is no you know no like if this team i shouldn't even be a, like essentially a downgrade or demotion by any means the this utah hockey club should is going to have a incredibly like seems it's going to be a decently stacked top nine like those like those nine forwards you're going to have a hard time going against those either of those three lines yeah they have they have the luxury of depth that's for sure and i think when you look at and and potentially again just because this is the way it lines up right now doesn't mean it's got to stay that way i mean you've got to find a place for kerfoot for mcbain for stenlin um you know these guys have to have a place to go and if you let's let's project that second power play unit a little bit here, mm-hmm. uh, you can probably put some kind of combination of Kraus, Hayton, Doan, Michelli. Um, depending on who the other defender is, I'm not entirely sure. I know they like to go four and one. I know Dursey gets his power play time. Sergachev is obviously going to get his power play time. He's going to run the power play, so Certainly. no you know, no thoughts about that. Um, you know, I kind of like that those guys can chip in that way. The other thing is too, is I would not be surprised at this point. I'm kind of thinking to myself, you can always add, you know, another player here, another player there, a value signing, whatever. What if, because here's the other thing is Michelli did for the first time, take some faceoffs. Now, not a ton, uh, but in his 22-23 campaign, he wasn't really taking any face-offs. Is he versatile enough to maybe learn enough and shift to center? Maybe. And and I don't I don't know the answer to that question. But again, if you teach a guy to be able to play up the middle, especially at the NHL level, and he can be a good two-way player and still give you that production, now he's worth even more to you. So Part of the question mark for me for the Michelli development cycle is going to be, do you move away from the left side? Do you try the off wing or do you try any time at center? I think that's going to be an interesting thing to see if that gets explored at all. And that's, and that's certainly something that I actually think that, uh, that the Utah Hockey Club will have the, the, the luxury to be able to afford. It's like, all right, let's try you out here. Let's try you out there. Cause they're, what we mentioned too, they're still in no rush to push for a playoff spot this year. They're going to try and they're going to look decently doing it and they're going to have a decent amount of chances doing it. Um, but they're like, all right, we're still in no crazy rush. Let's try you here. Let's try you there. Let's see what makes where you're most comfortable. And we can see maybe what you, maybe something that we think you can work on. And that's kind of what the point of, you know, I mean, yeah, sure. You want to, you still want to put out your best product forward. Um, but at the end of the day, I think one of the good things about what Andre Torrini, um does as a coach for this program is to teach. It's kind of funny how under the radar this team has been improving. The, the wins weren't quite there. They had a little stretch last year, I think, where they were very impressive. And all, people almost started to notice them, but then they came back down to earth. Which, yep. I mean, <laughs> it's kind of funny because just when they were about to to really start turning some heads, of course, things break the other way, and that happens. But defensively, they're so much better this year. And if the forward improvement continues, this is this is a team that is finally going to get those heads turning in their direction. But it's just been so under the radar. It's been so sneaky. And look, part of it was the arena deal. Part of it was the uncertain future of the franchise. People really weren't looking at the on-ice product, but if you overlook this team, they would beat you. It's pretty much that simple. Awesome. We talked about Matias Michelli's impact the last couple seasons. We just we mentioned the kind of impact we hope to see him in this next season. But 
Coming up, let's talk about the impact we hope to see down the road for Matias Michelli in the next several seasons for this UTA Hockey Club franchise. And then, as we still mentioned, maybe still get, see if we can get a point total here and there. We'll do that right after this. And this episode of the Locked On Utah NHL Hockey Club is brought to you in part by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts to your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Let's cap things off on this episode of Locked On Utah Hockey Club podcast. Robin Leonio and Tom Callahan talking about Matias Michelli. And, and Tom, one of the things that I want to get to is now talk about the future impact. Because at, as you mentioned earlier, Matias Michelli is only 23. He is incredibly young and has a massive amount of runway to still keep getting better and be a major part of this franchise. That brings the question to you, what kind of impact, what kind of role do you see him make in a few years from now? Yeah, it's, it's a great question, and it's not always easy to project where you see these guys landing year to year. But if you, you take the body of work of the last couple of years, and the the categories have improved in a couple of important ways to me. The assists have been about the same. So that means, I think, reliably, 40 assists, again, is a number we can shoot for. He's been right about there, can distribute the puck at the NHL level. Okay, I feel good about him as a playmaker. The shot total has gone up. I think it'll go up even more this year. When that shot total goes up, I expect him to break 20 goals. So I'm projecting him heading into this year at age 23 to be able to hit 20 goals, 60 points for this hockey club. If he's still averaging just that little bit over 16 minutes a night, I think that that's a reasonable proje projection. A breakout year for me would be to touch 70 points and get to 25, 45, or, you know, still 30 and 40, something like that. If he gets to 30, I think that's blowing the roof off. Uh, but, you know, you never know how things are going to work themselves out. But I think just, you know, the cu curve continues to go upward 20, maybe 22 this year. Still around that 40 assist mark. Definitely break 60 points. And that certainly seems to be like, a, I, I think, a a pretty fair projection given the, you know, given the arc we've seen already. Um and it, I mean, it would, would it be amazing to, you know, to try to see if we, can, if we can get more players to try to hit a, like a 30 goal mark, wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be so nice? Like, yeah. um, because in today's, in today's game, you know, more, you know, 30, that, you know, that, that 30 goal mark is actually really hard to do. There are, yeah, sure. There are players out there, you know, your top of the top, your creme to the creme that are going to hit a 50 goal season, but those are rare now, right? You don't see that very much because you're get you're you're getting a lot of more scoring by committee these days if, especially if you have a team like Utah who is focusing on the depth rather than the top end it is it's wild it really is it it's not like it used to be rob and i was reading the other day i was talking to a buddy of mine who we very much love talking about how ridiculous hockey was in the 80s and I forget what year it was. I want to say 82, 83. Glenn Anderson to the Oilers. Finished second in the NHL in scoring, set a career high in points with 111 points, right? That's insane. Yeah. However, Wayne Gretzky in that year, had you taken all of Wayne's goals away, and I always love telling stories about if you it's take all of great. Wayne's goals away, 
But if you took all of Wayne's goals away that season, he still wins the scoring race. So, you know, it's, I think it was what, 212 points for Gretzky like that, that yeah. year. Just insane. We don't see that. Um, no. Now you do see guys, you'll see a guy challenge for 60. And I think that that's an elite player in today's game can push 70. I remember the year that both Tamu Solani as a rookie and Alexander Mogilny scored 76 in the same year. Uh, I remember, you know, in the early 90s, Pat LaFontaine, I grew up a Sabres fan, Pat LaFontaine had 148 points and finished fifth in league scoring that year. You know, it's it's a bit different these days. And, of course, the goaltenders are bigger, and people argue the gear is bigger, but the guys are bigger. They're 6'7 now. The net has not increased in size, right? right? They're not 5'9 anymore. So, you know, that's a lot more human uh, blocking the net. And plus the technique has changed. They seal off the ice better. It makes it tougher to score goals. You have to be a different type of shooter now. So with a young player like Michelli, and again, we talk about 23 years old. I mean, you see how rare it is to have these elite scores. But man, when you find the 60, 70 point players and you can get them at a value contract, he's young. He's on a second deal. He's still under team control, right? There's RFA coming up ahead. Like I really like where he is for his development, his output and his cost. I think he's a tremendous value to this club right now. And you know what? I mean, 60 points is nothing to sneeze at in today's NHL. Yeah. He certainly will be due a raise probably. I mean, if he keeps yes. going, if he keeps going at this pace, right? Yes. Um, and and I, think, I hope he does. I hope he makes yeah. so much money that we're trying to do, you know, cap gymnastics, figuring out how to keep this guy. And it's, and, and again, that goes, and, and that kind of goes with something that I mentioned, the everydayers know this, uh, of what we mentioned before of that, you know, that 2026, 2027 year where you have, Four contracts, at least four forwards, up for um, up for a re-signing in RFA. But Shelley, Hayton, Cooley, and Doan all in one year. You got to focus on, and uh, hopefully, all four of those players will we do will we do raises. It's going to create some problems, probably. But you, these got these are the ones that. These are those core players, the future core players that you're going to want to keep around. Yeah, and that year also you've got Nick Schmaltz coming up as a UFA, and by then he'll be over 30. So I don't know if his 5.85 AAV is going to be kept around after that or not. Fair. Uh, and, and it depends where the team is going, of course. You'll have another year of Lawson Krause. you got two more years of Clayton Keller. And the cap will have gone up by then probably another, I'm going to guess, $8 million in the next two years. So you will have some more breathing room. But again, and that's just the forwards, right? So that uh, just real quick. Oh, Shea Weber's a UFA in 26, 27. Uh, but Valimaki, Kesselring, and Kulia Chunak uh, will be RFAs that season. And then you have, well, Vemelka's UFA the year before, and then Ingram will be UFA 26-27. So just kind of a, a preview of that. But, yeah, there's decisions that will have to be made coming up on that, especially now that, you know, your biggest contract is no longer a forward but a defenseman. You know, Sergachev's 8.5 AAV, and then you have that. Then you have, you know, Dursey is $6 million. So, uh, and there's only one puck. I mean, these guys can fight over the puck, but there's only one puck. So you really have to make sure that, you know, the egos are, are sated, that, you know, everybody gets along and we can all play together in the same sandbox. And, you know, that's going to be important too. So I think if the team continues to grow together though, and really they benefited from the underdog mentality they've had the last oh, couple yeah. of seasons. So I think if they can keep that chip on their shoulder, there's no reason to think that, once they start to really sniff deep runs in the playoffs, which is, I think, what's going to happen by the time that 26-27 season hits, that's going to be the time where they have to make the decision of, do I want to try to finish the job with this group? And 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 and, and, and in a, an ideal situation, that's you know that's the hope, right? If you're yes. if you're if you are the front office of the Utah Hockey Club, if you are a fan of the Utah Hockey Club. And if you're just any teammate, you're like, I want to keep you around. You're a part of this franchise. We've stuck through it through the last few years of all, of all the rebuild. Now we're just one step away. We're going to do and we're, we're, we're right there. Absolutely. 
Uh, but I, I, mean, I like what you said, though, about, you know, what, you know, maybe the projections like, you know, and, and, uh, like it'd be really nice to see if Michelli could hit a, a 70 point season. That'd be certainly a phenomenal, uh, you know, phenomenal, especially it would get what we be seeing. And honestly, I do think I could, it's certainly possible in a few years down the road. I like him for 60 um, this year. I think. Yeah, this year. I, I think his his potential could be. 70 to 80 point guy. Uh, I don't think that's out of the question as he matures, gets a little smarter. Uh, Once he reaches really... prime Michelli, that's right. That's certainly and, something to discuss. And that's what we're heading towards. Now, is his ceiling any higher than that? You know what? I'm, I'm not someone who's going to ever say, well, this guy, his cap is third line plugger. No, I, I don't do that to players just because you're a third line plugger. Now, if you go in, you hit the gym, you shoot pucks every day, you come back, and all of a sudden you're a dynamite goal scorer, who am I to say that that's not who you are now? So I, I never want to put a cap on a guy's ceiling. But, I mean, I, again, to me, he projects to the top six. And if he is putting up those kinds of numbers, it's awful hard to find a way to keep him out of the top six. It's a nice problem to have, to be quite honest with you. I mean, and again, especially as as we have the other, you know, the other players mentioned, like 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 your Logan Cooley and Barrett Hay, and and another one I didn't mention in the in the contracts because he's up the year before in Dylan Gunther, like that's another thing. You know, he's you know he again. We're gonna talk. We'll probably talk about Gunther later on in this off season when we get when we get more time. But again, there's, there would be another player who's a true goal scorer who can only benefit from having a guy a guy who's a very assist heavy guy like Matias Michelli. So. It's only going to get better. And consider now you have a much more well-rounded defense behind you. So number one, you're probably keeping the puck out of the net more. But number two, when those guys are making a good first pass, you're getting out of the zone faster, more efficiently. Your breakouts are better. That leads to more chances off the rush and then sustained zone time if you're winning your battles and your cycle sure. game is good. Those are all positive things that lead to long-term gains, both in the win column and in the offensive statistics of the guys. Certainly. Any final thoughts before we close things off on this episode? You know what? Just uh, you're going to hear us talking about a lot of these players and the bright futures they have in front of them. This is the beginning of the, the fruits of the work, you know, all the groundwork that's been laid of the lean years of the trading away, you know, maybe in some cases beloved players to get picks, to get prospects, to rebuild now the cupboards and boy are they full they're bursting at this point and this is where utah this is the, where the ascension starts and it's going to be pretty cool to watch it will be certainly uh quite this quite the sight to see and it'll be really 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 fun so and if, and if you're just tuning in now to this club you guys are going to be super excited to see this team only a few years from now but that's going to be it for this episode of the Locked On Utah Hockey Club podcast. If you like what you heard, don't forget to leave a review, like, comment, and subscribe if you have yet to already. We're available everywhere you get your podcasts, including on YouTube, Sirius XM, and ad-free on Amazon Music. If you have yet to join, be sure to join our text club, our insider text club. Text us at, at 801-760-9033. 801-760-9033 to get started. And uh, you guys can get, get it access to some exclusive content, access to our mailbag, ask, get, get some questions in. We'll answer. Um, we'll try to answer every week and get to as much as we can. Uh, lots of ex lots of things. Again, able to text us one-on-one. -on -one. There's no other place to do that than our text club. Once again, 801-760-9033. And uh, we'll get some access to um, to uh, hit the, the link in the description so you guys can sign up if you are doing it from your computer. You don't want to do it from your phone. Um, maybe you're just having issues, whatever it might be. We make, we'll make it easier for you guys to sign up. Don't forget to interact with us also, though, on social media. We are on X at LO underscore NHL Utah. Uh, that goes alongside on being on Instagram and on threads. I'm personally at Robin underscore Leonio. Tom Callahan is at Callahan on air. Interact with us, ask a question. We might answer right back for a future episode of the Locked On Utah Hockey Club podcast. Thanks again, everyone, for listening to today's episode, and we'll see you guys next time.